Good evening, this is News Mongolia. I'm Satan Khorz in the Mimbi World studio. For our top stories, law on promoting the film industry will be enacted from January 2022. Mongolia's stock market capitalization increased to 1.3 billion US dollars. Judoka Said Molai won a silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. For other news, stay tuned. The Ministry of Health reported that 1,243 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed on Wednesday and seven more people have died. As of today, 1,243 new cases were confirmed nationwide, bringing the total number of COVID-19 cases in Mongolia to 160,344. Within the past 24 hours, 2,100 more patients have recovered. Unfortunately, seven more patients died due to COVID-19 complications. Out of today's cases, 511 cases were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar and 732 in the provinces. As of today, 10,477 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals. Out of them, 178 are in critical condition. Additionally, 10,835 people with mild symptoms are being treated at home. The law on promoting the film industry will be enacted from January 2022. It allows foreign and local filmmakers to easily obtain visa and tax exemptions. The new law will be friendly to foreign filmmakers. The visa issuance to Mongolia will be much easier with no daunting procedures. When the film production cost in Mongolia is about $500,000, up to 30% of the tax will be refunded. Foreign film artists will get their visa fast and easy. The newly approved law on promoting the film sector also gives opportunity to Mongolian filmmakers to establish solid contacts with overseas partners. The lawmakers believe that these decisions can promote Mongolia on the global film market. They think it can draw overseas partnerships and expertise into Mongolia. Local film producers will get payable or non-payable financial support from the newly founded Special Fund for Film Art. Payable financial support targets commercial filmmakers. On the other hand, Independent films that have the capacity of promoting Mongolia at international film festivals will get non-payable support from the special fund. In Mongolia, the arts and culture sector makes up 4% of the gross domestic product. Currently, the Ministry of Culture is undertaking a survey on how many local films are produced each year and how they stack up against films from other countries. During the pandemic, Mongolia's stock market experienced a boom. The stock market capitalization increased to 1.3 billion US dollars and is showing a growth of 75%. As of today, APU LLC's stock market valuation reached 1 trillion Mongolian tugrus, and it has become the first company with a valuation of more than 1 trillion Mongolian tugrus. During the pandemic, a high number of people turned to stock market for secondary income. In 2020, around 10,000 stockholders played in the market. This year, the number has reached to 15,000. Also, certain factors influenced the favorable increase of the stock market, including the decrease of deposit rates at banks and the establishment of investment funds. The Mongolian stock market was quite active this year. It has seen the highest amount of activity in the first half of 2021. The changes made in the Mongolian stock market are currently bearing fruit. Now people involved with the stock market can enjoy the same rights whether they possess a lot or a few stocks. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Thank you for staying with us on the MMB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. 
In Arhantotsum of Sitling Amag, a freight train belonging to UB Railways crashed and spilled a lot of oil products, causing significant damage to the environment. The accident occurred 207 km from Swatersum in Sitling province. Professional organizations are working at the site where the fuel spill occurred to take the necessary initial mitigation, neutralization and soil disposal measures. According to the results of the Environmental Analysis Laboratory, 0.007 mg per liter of oil products was found in samples taken from the edge of the yellow water. Soil analysis was carried out in four stages at a depth of 10 to 70 cm and the maximum contamination was determined at a depth of about 50 cm. The vegetation of the area is grassy with light brown soils with river valleys and pastures. At the moment, an assessment of the impact on the environment is being carried carried out by specialized organizations. Prime Minister Oyun Yurtin held a working meeting with the Prime Minister of South Korea, Kim Bu Gum. The Mongolian Prime Minister expressed his desire for a strategic partnership as South Korea's third neighbor, as well as an increase in the frequency of mutual visits at the highest level, economic cooperation, trade and investment. Both sides agreed on the importance of close cooperation in the current difficult situation of the COVID-19 pandemic and agreed to work closely together to share knowledge, experience and information aimed at overcoming the pandemic. Prime Minister Oyurtin thanked the government of the Republic of Korea for its support of citizens during the pandemic, conducting special charter flights and combating the pandemic. He also called on the government of the Republic of Korea to support the protection of the Mongolian citizens living in the Republic of Korea during the pandemic and ensure their vaccination. The Korean Prime Minister congratulated the people of Mongolia on the 100th anniversary of the People's Revolution. He also thanked the government of Mongolia for supporting the Northeast Asia Cooperation Initiative on Infectious Disease Control and Health Care and the new Northern Policy. The parties agreed to deepen cooperation in international and regional arenas, especially in the field of peace and security in Northeast Asia. In September, schools plan to resume their in-class learning after a year and a half of a pandemic freeze. The number of first graders will be high this year, reaching 80,000 students. About 50 new school and kindergarten buildings are planning to open as the number of learners is increasing. Around 80,000 first graders are estimated to enroll at schools this fall. In Bayangot district, one of the biggest districts in Ulaanbaatar, the number of new first graders is around 6,000. Around 17,000 kids will go to kindergarten. The number of schools and kindergartens in Bayangot district is increasing by 9 this year. This year, funding of 44.8 billion turks is planned for learning facilities through government and for need. Five kindergartens and four schools will newly operate. Even though the number of schools has increased, some schools are still having a great number of students. They still have to organize classes in three shifts. The total number of students enrolling at secondary schools is around 600,000 nationwide. The biggest concern this fall is the pandemic situation. If the situation is manageable, parents are willing to send their children back to school because they worry that after a year and a half of homeschooling, kids are becoming socially distant and are experiencing a lack of learning. Officials report that young people of working age tend to rely on social welfare instead of working. The general public is critical of the social welfare program and wants it to be revised. In 2020, the Mongolian government allocated 1.5 trillion Mongolian tukus to social welfare programs. The public is critical of the fact that too much generosity will take away the will for young people to find employment. The high unemployment rate also promotes the spread of alcoholism. One statistic showed that in a sub-district with 7,000 residents in Suhuatar district, 600 people are registered as unemployed. Most of them deny job offers because of their low wages and prefer to stay unemployed and receive social welfare. We observed one family with a drinking issue. Our report showed that the family has an income of 800,000 tigriks, but they still use meal vouchers. All of their income came from social welfare, and they have no desire to accept a job offer for less than 500,000 tigriks. In the first quarter of 2021, the number of unemployed surpassed 100,000. The official unemployed rate is at 8%. 
On the other hand, certain industries are facing labor shortages. The industries with the highest numbers of labor shortages are construction, followed by wholesale and retail. The amount of medical waste has increased by 2 to 4 percent during the pandemic. The proper disposal techniques are hard to implement in rural areas. The most common waste materials are masks and protective suits. They all need to be disinfected before disposal. In the capital city, two companies are receiving medical waste for disinfection. They are working it up to 80 percent capacity. If necessary, we can increase their capacity to 100 percent. But in the countryside, there aren't enough facilities for disinfecting medical waste. It just ends up being buried underground. Since the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, the usage of masks has enormously increased. Environmentalists are concerned about the impact of discarded surgical masks on the environment. Mongolian judoka Said Molai lost to world champion, silver and bronze medalist of the Olympic Games, Japanese judoka Takanori Nagase, and won a silver medal at the Olympic Games. As a result, the Mongolian national team won their third medal at the Tokyo Olympics and was able to change the color of the medal. Japan's men judokas have won all four weight classes. Said Molai responded with an Olympic silver medal to the Mongolian people who warmly welcomed him in difficult times when he could not fight for their country. Who is Said Molai? The Iranian government ordered him to lose in the semi-finals to prevent him from having to compete against Sagi Muki of Israel, who won the 2019 World Cup final. In response, Molai did not return to Iran after the tournament and in August 2019 traveled to Germany and applied for Asylum with a two-year refugee visa. Said Molai applied for Mongolian citizenship at the end of 2019 with the Office for Foreigners. His request was submitted to the government and sent to the presidential office, and on November 20, 2019, President Batotlak issued a decree granting Mongolian citizenship to Said Molai, who thereby became a citizen of Mongolia. Mongolia's women 3x3 basketball team is participating in the Tokyo Games for the first time in our country's history. Our team played its last match in the group today. After the match, the organization of the Tokyo Olympics wrote Thank you, Mongolia on the screen and paid tribute to the Mongolian national team. The Mongolian Basketball Association 3x3 announced on its website the entire team successfully overcame obstacles in participating at the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games congratulated and paid tribute to the Mongolian national team, which for the first time participated in team sports. Here is the weather forecast for the world's major cities. This is it for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.